Greetings everyone, how you doing today? So we, uh, I was driving along and I had some uh, catastrophic brake failure. Nothing bad happened. But you see, let's start with a diagnosis, right? So the pedal I was pushing down and I, you know, it had no pressure. So I was like, oh boy. So if you look here, you can see the brake, master brake cylinder. And uh, it had no, very little to no fluid in it, all right? So I knew I lost fluid aggressively in a, sh in a short amount of time. Right, that's the first thing I noticed. Because uh, I pushed the pedal and it just went down and the car wouldn't stop. And I don't know, I don't know what happened, right? So the next thing I wanted to do, right, is to check out. I jacked up the car. And I was just like looking around. Here's the driver's side rear. Check I looked at the front and then I looked at the uh, passenger side. Right? It's a little hard to see today. But uh, right here, right, is brake fluid. It was just brake fluid dripping down, right? So the wheel cylinder had blown out. Now here's the thing about the car, right? Uh, when you lose when you when you when you lose brake fluid, there's only a couple places it can happen. Uh, along the middle of the car. There's a uh, few lines. I'm sorry, brake lines that go all the way to the front, and they f and they end up right back here into the wheel uh, wheel drum cylinder, wheel brake cylinder, right? So follow those lines, and you you'll see exactly where uh, where the um, where the brake uh, lines can fail. So you so my wheel brake cylinder on this side was uh, had failed. Right, so I gotta replace that and the whole drum. It's gonna be a lot of work. The whole thing's getting replaced, so we'll take you on that little journey. And then uh, again, you wanna follow the lines because they can corrode, and when they do, it's it's difficult, you know? Not too difficult. You just have to buy a line and reshape it yourself and have to get a tool to open up the uh, actual uh, lines so they fit properly. Okay, so that's that. Let's get started. There's a couple of things you want to do for safety, right? You want to chuck the wheels from in front. Are you done? Because the, uh, the car is going to be tilted upwards when it's jacked up. Ch tilted from the back. So the parking brake will do nothing. And also the parking brake needs to be disabled because we're going to uh, replace the drum. And uh, the wheel transmission needs to be in, a, in, re in reverse. Right? So the wheels like that. The next thing you want to do is uh, take your transmission here, put it in reverse, disable the handbrake so it doesn't do anything.
those are 19 millimeters. You notice that I left the jack engaged? No, it's lifted up, but it's not like lifting the carb. It's lifted up, locked into place because this is my fail safe for my fail safe. So three layers of protection. If anything fails, it doesn't fall on me. Okay, so that's a good thing to practice. Just leave it engaged, but don't leave the weight of the vehicle on the jack because you don't want to blow out the hydraulics of the jack itself, okay? So these can be a little bare to pull off the drums. What you want to do is uh, there are uh, two bolts you can thread inside of those. Those happen to be um, M8s by 1.25. That's a thread pitch, and that's uh, they're 12 millimeters. So you can get them from the uh, auto store. These are the part numbers. It's Dorman 981412D. And you just uh, go like this. You thread them in. I think they are, they look like they're 12, 12 millimeters maybe. They're 12, no, they're like 14. So you got a 14 millimeter on here. I'm just gonna screw them down. What'll happen is, uh, we'll start to push the rotor right off. Stop the rotor from rotating. You can do something like this. If you could get a longer something like that, put it against the ground. Fire bar would work. I don't really. I, I already pulled this off, so it's going to be easy for me to do. I'm just showing you how to do it. Other than that, this will start to turn a lot if you don't do that. You can see it just kind of lifts the rotor right off. This drum of seeing better days. Once you have everything apart, right, it's going to be really obvious what failed. Um, so this here will start to leak. Sorry. This will start to leak. You'll see it. It's going to be wet. Now you see how wet all this is. That's from the uh, brake fluid coming out. So this should be bone dry all around, and because it's wet clear indicator that this failed and uh, so this is the wheel drum cylinder no <laughs> there's no more if you ever want to know what brake shoes look like when they're completely worn away this would be it because you can see it's just metal there's nothing else there over here you can see that there's some brake shoe material and then that's the metal <laughs> there's no brake shoe material here just
Okay, so we got to get this uh, brake line off, right? And we're going to use a 10 millimeter um, line wrench. You don't want to use anything else because it will strip it. You'll have a bigger, bigger problem. So I'm trying to get that line wrench on there. Just take your time. If it feels funky, just stop. Maybe spray it. Okay, so that's going to come off. So that's loose. Right. So we have uh, some 10 millimeter bolts we gotta get. These are quarter inch. So far, so good. That's not gonna work. So you could get a rebuild kits for these and uh, they give you all the springs and gaskets. Uh, we're just gonna get a new, we're gonna replace this with a new one. I wanted to show you uh, information about this. Okay. So uh, this is a uh, three fourths. I'm not sure what that refers to. Maybe it's the outer diameter, inner diameter. And it's a Findlex R4. So I'm not really sure. That, I don't know if that's like uh, the factory one that came with it, but either way, that's what it is. Just let you know.
Now's a good time to check your rear wheel bearing. Up, oh, someone's coming. Your boyfriend. All right, so you want to like turn this and listen for any grinding sounds. If you hear any grinding sounds, that's not good. Your, your, your wheel bearing's failing. So just double check that while you're here. So you kind of want to lay things out along with taking uh, several photos of what was originally there. Just to get a feel for how to put everything back together. I'm going to grease those points where the uh, brake shoes kind of touch. And now we're going to coat this also with a little bit of grease. So I'm going to use my marine grease. We have two uh, wheel uh, drum cylinder, brake cylinders. Uh, this is uh, part number uh, Yeah, I'm gonna go with that, so 18E1218. And then this is the other one, 18. 18E1220. One's going to be for the left side, one's going to be for the right side. I think this is the left side. Well, right side, sorry. This is, I think it's labeled. There you go. The label. See, that has an R on it. So it'll be the right side. get some anti-seize and put it uh, right in there. Remember those 10 millimeter bolts? We have two of them. Before we do that, let's catch the back brake part. Be careful with this because you don't want to strip it. It's 
the most important part of this project right here. So get yourself comfortable. That's good. You can tell it's not threaded, not cross threaded because it's just going in pretty easily. So this has witness marks. So you can kind of tell how far down to, uh, to tighten. So just look at the uh, marks themselves. more anti-seas. Uh, uh. I just want to catch it. Don't like tighten it down right away because the other one <laughs> Give yourself some space to like maneuver.
You notice they changed the grease from the green stuff to the red stuff. The red stuff is the high temperature. The green stuff is marina grease. So you want to go that you want to go that route instead. Bottom at the top. Okay, that's in. So this is really tricky. You usually have a little bit of a issue with how to get this going. So there's a lot of different ways to do this. Uh, I'll just show you what I think is best. Take this. This is not the best tool for it because it doesn't seem to match, but it doesn't okay. Oh, well, that worked out well. Did not expect that. So that's, that's that, right? Okay, this is a passenger side, so... You gotta pay attention to how these springs go, okay? Remember, this is a passenger side. I do recommend you wear glasses when you're dealing with these springs. So, this is important. On the passenger side, this is America. So, the right side, whatever you... Right side from looking at the car from the back, right? This long part here goes on top. Like that, okay? So this usually is the most annoying part. So I I'm gonna show you a really easy way to do this, right? So you just wanna go like this. Hook that on. Right, I'm hooking it into that, that gap right here. Can you see that? See that right there? I'm hooking that into this side on that gap. And I'm hooking it onto this gap. See, so I don't like how, I'm gonna, let's put a little bit more bend in this, a word about, oh, that's a little bit more like how it should look. Okay. It's bent like that because I took it off two times before. So, okay. So we have that like that. All right. Put this in here. this. Remember, make sure you grease everything up too, like that just totally got messed up. So I'm going to re-grease that. It's one of the problems of working a shade, an unshaded tree mechanic. You know, things fall and you're like, ah. Oh. That dirt. Okay, so we got that. How you doing? Good, good. Nice hot day, right? How's the baby hanging? Good, good, good. I'm so happy it's got a little shaded area, uh -huh. <laughs> right? Oh, I got glasses on. <laughs> exactly. Too cool. Too cool. Have How's a good day. You, you too. too. So, again, I want to put this uh, long part here, like that. Yeah. Okay. Now, this is the part. All right, you're going to go like this. Pull it in like that, right? Put that underneath. Like that. Just like that. See how much easier that was than trying to like fandangle that with some springs? Now, put your glasses on because things are under tension here. Right? Put your, make sure this is seated. Put your, uh, I'm gonna 
Push that there. a little bit okay so now you got it partially turned on all right you can go like this and finish it off okay now we have a couple things going on here we got to put this adjuster on just pretty easy it pivots it pivots on that and then ratchets on this so if you look at the angle of its of it you can see it's, it wants to ratchet down like that right. All right let's see so kind of greased right here for uh, to make sure the thing stays smooth oh yeah that was happening oh come back I can rub a little bit more grease on it. I like all that. difficult to get in place. We have two more springs. Do the bottom bottom spring. I guess this is bottom spring. You really want to put your glasses on because there's a lot of tension that's gonna be uh, pulled on. Get that seated. Suck less. Had it. Okay. okay, so when I originally took this apart, right, it looked like this. That was there, and this was down there in front. You can tell, right, that we have something a little different here. These springs are not shaped the same as the one that was on there. So it was all hooked up in front. So what I'm gonna do, have to do, is uh, kind of follow the pattern of the spring. And so we'll go, we'll have, I'm gonna have to go behind like this. Okay, and then come up on the front like that. That's the best I can do. This is for the adjuster. That's that. So what should happen is when you press the brake, this should move and push this out. 
So you want to make sure the bottom looks like that. Everything is pushed in. So you don't, you're gonna have a hard time getting into a, the drum installed. So again, look at it, you see? This is what it all looks like put together. So this is the longer side up front. That's it hooked in right there. Your spring. And see how that ratchet in action is going to go downwards towards the ground, towards earth. That's a uh, spring up top. Onto the brake shoe. Underneath. All right, so now we're going to bleed our brakes, and uh, what we want to do is uh, top off the reservoir with brake fluid. All right. And now we attach a piece of line, hose, a jar, small little hole in the top for, for breathing. It's like over here. Big hole for the hose. You have a brake part, brake fluid in the bottom, and you're just gonna pump it. After you pump the brakes, you know, like just tighten this back a little bit. I didn't show you in the back, but you're just tightening it, just to loose, loosen it up just a little bit. You tighten it back up, like shut it all the way off when this is almost full. That's an eight millimeter. And you take the fluid itself that's in here, right? And you pour it back in your, uh, if it's clean. Take the fluid that's clean, if that, again, it, that's if it's clean. And you pour it back into your container. Like, I like this, this is, this is pretty clear. It's clear enough. It's not great, but clear enough. Ugh. That's gonna turn me into a liar. Put the fluid uh, lid open. Right. Make sure nothing contempt, no particulates get on top of that. I'm gonna pour your brake part fluid back into here. Leave a little bit at the bottom. Do the same thing over and over and over and over and over again until you get no more air in the system, okay? And you'll know because you can see air bubbles coming out when you're pumping it, okay? It would be best to have a uh, to have a hose line that is transparent, translucent. That way you can see. But uh, just do it, do it a lot. You know, you'll feel the brakes get harder and harder and harder and harder. Okay, so wash, rinse, repeat. I'm gonna pour this 
back into the master brake cylinder. You don't want that to get low because uh, you get air in the system and it takes much longer to, to get the air out. Okay, so we're on the driver's side rear right now in America. I'm gonna go to the passenger side rear next. Actually, the, the proper order for this, I believe, is driver's side front, passenger side front, passenger side rear, driver's side rear, okay? All right, so just do that. You can double check the manual, but uh, I think that's how you do it. All right, so we wanna adjust the handbrake now, right? So you gotta jack the car up. Uh, and you want to check to see what uh, kind of um, the wheels and how they spin. So let's take a look at it. Right. So the hand brakes all the way down. So it's spinning. We got a little bit more drag on that side, which is totally fine. But uh, what we're gonna do, I want to show you uh, from the inside now. All right. So the rear console is out, right? And uh, that's that right there. That's the rear console. It has uh, just, it's really simple. It's got like six screws. Right. Sorry. Oops. We got one here, one there, one there. They're all Phillips and three on the other side. You just unscrew those. All right, but here, see this right here? So the handbrake's all the way down. All right, this here, is a 12 millimeter and you just right see tight see right you want to go six clicks is what you want so this right now is at like nine clicks too many so uh, okay so you see the hand breaks up all right let's go look at the tire let's give them a spin see what see how they behave That's not going anywhere. So that's locked down. This one here still spins a little bit. So we gotta like adjust the handbrake some more so we can get a little bit more tension on that. But that tire, that, that one's pretty locked down. 